neither Georgia nor Tennessee mm. is in Danny Cannell's college football playoff bracket if the season ended today. In fact, only three SEC schools get in because you have two ACC schools, SMU and Miami at number eight. So, so explain this, Danny. How in the world are only three SEC teams in this? Only? I mean, what do you want me to give them half well, the field? But, but three is more than enough for the best conference in college football. On other networks, they're saying we need five, we yes, need six. Exactly. And then they get four, and they're like, okay, that's where we probably should have been. <laughs> and they probably will get four. Again, this was if the season ended today. Uh -huh. Probably, you know, what's interesting is the team that I have ranked the highest, Texas, is probably the team that I have the least amount of confidence. They still have to go to College Station that last week of the season. And the reason I don't have Georgia in and Ole Miss and Bama in is because guess what happened Georgia played both of those teams lost both of those games straight up so that's why I have Georgia on the outside although once it's in the end I think Georgia probably is that team that starts jumping some of these teams as they face each other and start losing okay, some I, games. I just I don't see two ACC teams getting in and only three SEC teams but uh, you know what I don't hate it I don't hate it as of right now you have um, uh, we're do, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Ole Miss as the only road team winning in the first round Danny so yep. let's jump ahead to the quarterfinals and let's start with that matchup upper left there it's it's one of those ACC Ooh. teams Miami taking on the number one team Oregon yeah this game would be so much fun you'd see Cam Ward going against Dylan Gabriel probably both Oof. gonna be in New York City for the Heisman Trophy but ultimately this is more about Oregon and that is about Miami Miami's defense has been a liability Oregon hasn't showed many liabilities at all the game they struggled with this weekend against Wisconsin it was their eighth game in a row that is a gauntlet they had to run and ultimately they got out and escaped with a win in a road environment I've been told by everybody how hard it is to win in tough environments that's a tough environment as anywhere in Madison around jump around but I think Oregon would get it done against Miami okay moving on to uh, boy, I love this next matchup the four versus the five You've yeah got Coach Prime, Dion, Travis Hunter is going to probably win the Heisman Trophy against the SIGs, the Fighting SIGs in IU. Yes. Uh, this game would be really interesting. I love the story of Colorado. Indiana's a really good football team. I think we still need to start taking that into consideration, realizing that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody. And we're about to find out a lot more about them as they face Ohio State this weekend. I think Indiana is one of the more complete teams. And Colorado, as great a story as they've been, remember, they did face Nebraska and got beat really bad, 28-10. Yeah. to 10, And we saw Indiana face that same team and put up 50 on them and blow them out. So I don't think that's any offense to Colorado to say they would lose to Indiana. Okay, so you had Indiana moving on and Oregon moving on from that side. How about this side, starting with Texas and Ole Miss? This, uh, so I think this one, again, I mentioned before, I don't know if Texas will be there in this position, winning the SEC in the end. Mm -hmm. Again, this is if it ended today where they'd have the highest seed and they'd be the, the best team from them. I think Ole Miss is dynamic. Their defense with Princely U on the defensive line, Walter Nolan, is one of the more physical defenses in the country. And we already saw Texas struggle with Georgia's defense. I think you might see a similar outcome there. But here's the difference. I think Ole Miss's offense would be able to score on Texas's defense. So I have Ole Miss beating Texas in that round. Okay, and you had SMU getting the, the bye out of the ACC. So you clearly have them winning out and then facing Ohio State here in the quarters. Yeah, and Kevin Jennings has been a great story. They've been a different team. And I still think SMU is the most disrespected team in the committee's rankings as well. We'll be interested to see how many jumps they can take after getting another win against Boston College. But... Going against Ohio State, I think it's a little bit too much. Ohio State, again, they had that one blemish where they went toe to toe with Oregon. If that team, had, if that clock had another second or two, they might have actually won that one. So I'll give this one to Ohio State. Okay, kind of looks like a Final Four in college basketball: yeah, one does. seed, a five seed, a six seed, and yeah. a ten seed here. Yep. Let's start with that Oregon-Indiana matchup. What do you see in a, a matchup of two Big Ten teams? who don't play each other unless they face off in the Big Ten Championship game. Exactly, and I don't think that'll happen, barring an upset this weekend, Indiana knocking off Ohio State. But I think this would be another one of those really fun matchups. This is where I would wonder if the attrition would start to catch up with Indiana. They would have just come off a game against Colorado. Oregon's been kind of used to going this way. They have more depth on the team. And ultimately, I just think Indiana would be overpowered a little bit by Oregon's weapons. I think it'd be a fun game. I think it'd be a good game. TV executives would hate it because it's not a basketball tournament. Tournament, but I still think Indiana would play Oregon really tough, but I think Oregon would win the game. I think the execs might sign up for this one. Ohio yeah. State may be the biggest brand in football, the best ratings and all that against Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss. Ooh, and it's a new blood kind of, right? Ole yeah. Miss has not had an SEC championship. They haven't been in this position. They're the team that hasn't had a national title. They'd have their opportunity to do it. I think this would probably be two of the best teams that we've seen from the brackets going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. 
I got Ole Miss getting the Ooh. edge. I mentioned their defense. I think their defense is underrated. Not enough people are talking about the job that Lane Kiffin did bringing in some of those pieces. The offense we always know, right? And they've had injuries. Trey Harris has been out. They've had injuries at running back. Give them a little bit of time to get back up and healthy. And I think they can go toe to toe with Ohio State and beat Ohio State. Wow. So you got Ole Miss, the 10 seed, against Oregon, the number one overall seed and the number one team in the country right now. Who wins your national championship? Oh, man. I wonder what the spread would be on this game. I think Oregon would be a slight favorite, but I'm actually going to go with the Ducks. I, do, I, I think this is the most complete team in college football. When you know, we, we know when you have problems, like rich people problems, that's Oregon <laughs> because people don't like the way they're winning. You know, they were, you know, late touchdown to cover against Oregon. Struggled, you know, a little bit against Maryland, but then won by three touchdowns. It wasn't enough. And then again against Wisconsin, mentioned that game, just winning by a field goal. I don't know what they were thinking with the fake field goal at the end of that game. That was beside me. But... Dylan Gabriel, most prolific passer in college football history when it's all said and done. I think his leadership, the running game, the pass game, the defense, I think Oregon gets okay. it done. Okay. Is your tongue blue, by the way? <laughs> it's actually green. Is it green? green? It's what? fine. Oh, stick, stick it out. Yes. Stick it. What the hell's going on here? I mean, I'm, You're well, matching the, the pick? ducks. Yes, <laughs> of course. I mean, some <laughs> people candy. match Sharpies or lighters. It's so funny because Danny. It's the candy his, that his, you hate. His wife doesn't allow him to have any <laughs> sugar she better at the not house. be watching. <laughs> so, so he sneaks it all here at work. And, and Amanda's got those green suckers upstairs that Danny likes to. It's probably it's the color of the Oregon uniform when they play in the natty. That'll be the color. Light and green. <laughs> with his uh, with his college football playoff bracket as of now, what, give us a great tease for the latest Cover Three podcast. Oh. We know you're so good at it. Oh, man. of course. Today's show, upon further review, we uh -huh. took a look back at the weekend, and we actually had coaches fired during the show. So oh, get a yeah. Live reaction from. Okay, that. sounds good. Cover Three podcast. Check it out.